Well, welcome back. It is time now for the Backbench, our weekly debate uh, of the issues facing our city. Joining us this morning, we have Labor MP Tony Booty and the Libs, Peter Capsambatis. Good morning to you both. Good, Good morning, morning, Tim. We're going to start off uh, with Palmyra residents uh, whose homes could be demolished to make way for the new $1.6 billion freight line that would link the Fremantle port to the industrial areas of Kewdale, Welshpool and Canningvale. They've been protesting furiously to save their homes for some time now. About 77 homes could be demolished. They finally met with the Transport Minister, Dean Nolder, late yesterday. Here's a little of what they told us this morning. Minister Nolder went and spoke about the two plans, the two options that were on the table, and um, to try and make us all feel a bit more relaxed about the whole process, but didn't work. Stressful. And very, um, and very, and very hectic. We've. Um basically spent a lot of time trying to fight this. I mean, we don't want to lose our homes. We don't want to lose our community. Everybody that has lived, we've lived together for the best part of 20 years. We've, uh, we've seen our kids grow up together. We've been to each other's weddings and bucks nights and all that, so, all that sort of thing. And to just have that all taken away, we, uh, we're not going out without We don't a, want to lose it. We don't want to lose it. We're when not going out without a fight. You've got to feel for them, don't, they? don't you? Losing their homes potentially, Peter. Are they fighting a losing battle here? You certainly have to feel for them. That's the human face of any of these decisions. As we said a few weeks ago, no final decision has been made and the Minister has made it very clear he's going to look at all alternatives. When um, are we going to get a final decision? I think these poor people are, are spending money renovating their home on a home that might get bulldozed. Well, they're probably not spending any more money renovating it. I think they've been told very clearly a decision will be made before the end of the year. And I think that's pretty fair. Um, and. I understand that they're stressed and I, you can see that in their faces. Anyone in the same circumstance would be, mm. but the best decision that can be made will be made and it's much, much fairer that they're getting a fair go and they're getting a hearing with the Minister than a government that could come that in and just say, let's go away. I don't think so, Tim. I'm, I'm not making the decision, but as I said, as we've discussed here before, anything that we can do to help these people keep their home is going to be a positive step and we'll continue to do that. Do you give them any hope at all of, of keeping their homes, uh, Tony? Do you think they're fighting a losing battle? Well, it's hard to know because the Minister's been all over the place with this, Tim. Uh, Simone McGurk and Peter Tinley, the local members who've been fighting the case on behalf of the residents, are really unclear what's going to happen and the Minister changes his tune every day. So you imagine mm. you have a home, you just don't know if it's going to be there in two years, three years' time. The Minister has been unclear, he's uh, created much fear and uncertainty and, and it's really mm. very inappropriate in, in, in a country where your home is so important to your existence. What would a, a Labor government do if you guys were in power right now? What would you do to help those people? Well, we would not home. be going ahead with the with the proposed uh, frail link. Uh, it's it's uh, quite clear that uh, that is not our option. That's the option of this government. Uh, that has never been our option, and uh, therefore these people's home wouldn't be in danger under a Labor government. Well, Peter, if if these people don't have to lose their homes, obviously there will be another option that will be taken up. What would that option be? Well, that option would be to use a different route. And it, you've got and to would remember that, bring other residents that this then government, play, that they may lose their homes. Well, w there are many options, including tunnels, which may avoid the need to resume any or many homes. We don't know yet. Wait, let, let's wait till the final decision is made. But it, let's also make it very, very clear. We have a congestion issue in Perth. We want to relieve congestion. We need to build roads like the Perth Freight Link. Only the government, only the Liberal National Government, is proposing to build this road. Labor's plan is to add to congestion, to have more congestion and not build these important roads. Can we afford to be digging holes? We surely, I mean 1.6 billion is a fairly hefty price tag as it is. I imagine digging is going to be an even more expensive option for a government with record levels of debt. Can we, be afford, can we afford to be doing that? Well, sometimes you can't afford not to and in these particular cases, here's the challenge for government and it's hard to make these decisions. Everyone is screaming out to save these people's homes. Certainly these people are. And when you propose a tunnel, the first question you get is, oh, can you afford to build a tunnel? So what do you want? What option do you want to choose? This road is much needed and the government will continue to make the assessment and come up with the right decision in due course. All right. Well, what's your option then? Well, our option is to uh, is to use the uh, the uh, not to use the freight link. Uh, is to look at Leach Highway, how we can improve that, and also to look at the problem with this freight link. It doesn't actually go to the port, so mm. it actually stops before the port. So it's not solving the problem. 
and it won't take the traffic off Leach Highway as they say it will take it off there. This is all part of the Treasurer trying to gain some votes with his local uh, constituents. It will not solve the problem. Labor's been very clear here where the Minister's been all over the place and is scaring the local residents. All right, can I just touch briefly on the issue of petrol prices. On Wednesday we saw the price of fuel jump by as much as 25 cents on the very day that is supposed to be the cheap day in the weekly cycle. Uh, it brings into question the the relevance of Fuel Watch. I mean it's a government funded, essentially an arm of government here, Fuel Watch. Why are we paying for it? What's, what's the point of it? I share your view. I don't really understand in 2015 why we need Fuel Watch. We can drive around our suburbs and check our fuel prices. Um, what is more frustrating for me, like every person that I speak to, is the way these fuel prices fluctuate. Coles and Woolworths, they can put out a catalogue and tell you how much an apple and how much a packet of cornflakes will cost for the whole week, and it's the same price for the whole week. They run the petrol stations now, or the majority of them. Why can't do that? they do the same with petrol? All right, well, why are taxpayers paying for Fuel Watch then? Um, as I said to you, I, I don't see the necessity for Fuel Watch anymore in, in 2015. All right. Well, Fuel Watch, would it continue to exist under a Labor government? Well, I, I'm not the person to ask on that, Tim, but I mean, Fuel Watch does have a purpose in mm. it that allows you to go on to check where is the cheapest fuel. You don't want to be driving around all day if petrol is so expensive mm. to find where the cheapest petrol is. Of course, it doesn't keep the petrol prices down, but it does allow the customer to make the best uh, selection as far as the uh, petrol price for that day. You'd think there would be all kinds of apps that would do that same service. I, I, I'm putting on the spot here, but I wonder how many millions is spent of taxpayers' money on Fuel Watch every year. It's not millions, it's um, in the hundreds of thousands, but uh, as I said, it's probably served its purpose over mm. a period of time. Uh, there can be apps, and more importantly, we should put the pressure on the fuel companies to make it clearer when they're going to increase prices and for how long they're going to yeah. keep them there. I Good know we've been talking about it a long time, <laughs> but it's about time they stepped uh, up to the plate. The same day the unicorns start uh, <laughs> flying through the sky as well. Peter and Tony, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks, Catch you next week.